Awesome. Welcome, everybody. You guys, I'm so excited to get back to just my individual lives. So I'll be popping on more by myself and then hopefully having some like regular guests like Susan. Um, I met Susan. Actually, is it okay to share the uh, group that we are both in? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, I actually started reading a lot of Susan's work um, in a mutual group that we have uh, that we are in called ES. And uh, this is a energetic synthesis uh, uh, foundations group uh, with Lisa Renee's work. And so I started uh, reading and following her stuff with Sammy and just going, wow, this is incredible. And it's fascinating. And she taught herself. Uh, then we did a, a book venture, uh, a co-authored with uh, several other authors. Uh, we did a co-author uh, book uh, called uh, Evolutionary Healers. So that was a journey. Um, my first time writing. Was it your first time doing this as well? Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, uh -huh. My gosh. Yeah. What an interesting experience. Uh, you uh -huh. know, nice to have under the belt. And, you know, now we're like, authors of like an Amazon bestseller, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But um, Susan, I am just absolutely amazed uh, at the work that you do. Uh, you, you've you taught yourself uh, to listen <laughs> and, and, and create. And I want to be able to bring this to more people, especially, um, especially those who have uh, children or uh, whether those be older children, uh, whether those be younger children, however uh, this meshes in their life, how can we communicate? Uh, how can we learn different to communicate with um, our children, our friends, our family members, our spiritual uh, cohorts? You know, they're here with us um, who have autism. Some are uh, nonverbal and some are verbal, uh, but within this whole range of humanity, we have people that have been literally pushed aside and it just breaks my heart. And so there are ways to communicate with everybody. I communicate different, you communicate different, everybody communicates different in it. Um, and, and you opened your heart to this and, and you brought this opportunity into the planet uh, for people. And uh, I would love to hear um, more about this. Well, um, gosh, I mean, I feel like I really stumbled onto it, you know, the, um, the kind of the cosmic work that uh, my daughter, Sam, um, and her other her other uh, collective group that she, you know, belongs to. So, I mean, I was pretty much a traditional parent, you know, I wanted my kids to go to school and go to college and do all these, uh, you know, kind of what we could call 3D normal things. Um, and uh, it, I had no idea about Ascension. I had no idea what was going on, you know, on the planet. I just remember like in 2000, in the 2000s, 2005, 2006, around there, just feeling like, buzz is going through you know and I had no idea what was going on and um it really actually took a cancer diagnosis for me to really begin awakening and they told me afterwards that it was almost like we've been trying to get your attention but you know it wasn't working so we have You're to not listening <laughs> you can't hear us <laughs> <laughs> that happened to one of my my oldest daughter actually um she she ended up with cancer and oh, wow. um, and fought through it but that made her wake up yeah she was like she was like thank goodness yeah yeah I mean it took it took that uh you know to really shake me awake um and uh then you know I think the, the big thing that happened for me was um you know as, as as I think a lot of star seeds do uh they get you know they're attracted to Reiki you know so I had an attunement and somehow it cleared my central vertical channel and then it just started open things started opening up and uh, I started seeing, you know, having all kinds of visions that uh, I thought were crazy and um, really started to feel enhanced um, communication from Sammy through visuals. You know, she was sending me images and things um, to kind of describe what she was kind of experiencing things. And, um, you know, my daughter yeah, is non, 
considered nonverbal, um, but uh, I think some of us call them beyond verbal because they're really communicating um, at a different at a different level. So um, between my daughter and you know we have an older son who's diagnosed with Down syndrome. Um, so I think the challenges with uh, really my kids, um, you know, have has really kept me kind of grounded and um, kept, continued my my awakening. So, you know, Samuel was showing me all kinds of things. And um, I always since my awakening, I always had this impulse to want to draw it. I had to draw it. And I'm not an artist, but I just had to draw it because um, that's it was just such, such a strong impulse in me. And, um, you know, I would get, I would get these attunements from the universe, you know, they were, it would come <laughs> down, they were like, goddesses, yeah, and like yeah. dragons coming down. And, you know, I would like, okay, I have to I think I'm supposed to open my hands, you know. <laughs> uh, and so I didn't really, you know, fully understand. Um, and, you know, we, we understand better in hindsight. So uh, the long, the short story is that, you know, my awakening began probably around 2009. Um, then I started in 2010 or so, I started finding other blogs and things that were describing what I was going through, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, and so that opened the door about ascension and all these other crazy things. Well, not crazy, it's crazy from a <laughs> certain perspective, but it's um, pretty amazing. Um, and I would say 2017 is when it started to really get rough meaning Sammy was more active and she was up and she was going to school um at that time uh having challenges you know they didn't know why she was exploding you know suddenly um right. at school and things you know and and uh her sensory system it was almost like in beginning in mid 2017 her sensory system was becoming even more overloaded you know than usual and uh you know she was telling me things like you know we're moving to a new harmonic universe. And, you know, I mean, there was like all these things happening. And fortunately I stumbled on energetic synthesis because uh, that community was describing the same thing. Nobody, I couldn't find anybody else talking about things like that. Right. And so um, thank God for that because- uh, it's, it's been a godsend because I feel the same way. Thank, thank God for that because Nobody, I'm same. I was hearing the same things and nobody was understanding what I was talking about. So it's like in a community where you're already considered a little nuts, like yeah. let's just take it to the next level, right? Right. <laughs> so I want to say um, before you go on, I'm, I'm loving listening to you, but I want to say thank you for correcting uh, my language because oh. language is so important. And it's important that we unravel a lot of the language and um, mm -hmm. uh, titles and subtitles that we put uh, not only upon ourselves, but upon society, other people. And so um, I love that it's, um, I love that the, the way of expressing this would be nonverbal or oh, beyond yeah. verbal from not from nonverbal to beyond verbal, because that really is the expression of what's happening. It is, right. it is truly beyond it. I remember my children when they were little, they spoke way beyond words mm -hmm. uh, and all we have to do is listen. Mm -hmm. So um, Liz is asking like, how did you know it was Sam talking to you? Like how, cause out of all the things that are coming in, how did you know? <laughs> well, you, you know, I would have, sometimes I would have visions of her. Um, I, you kind of know from your heart, you know, that that's who is, um, that's who, that's who it is, you know? So most of the time, um, you know, there were times when I wasn't sure and I would ask, you know, is this, is this from Sammy? And sometimes it's from the collective, the collective consciousness of the autist. Um, and so then, you know, I was starting to be able to distinguish um, and I'd have visions of different, different autists on the planet, let's say. Um, some of them, you know, many of them that I've never met don't, or don't know, you know? Um, so they started stream streaming in the beginning in 2017 as well, you know. Um, oh, and let me just say about your language. Some, some parents are comfortable with the language of nonverbal. So, uh, you know, just as we're finding these days, you know, every, there's different la labels or things 
that people reject and say, no, don't call me that, this or that, you know, so it's, it's hard to know what the right language is, but, you know, just to put out there that some parents are comfortable with the term um, nonverbal. So, yeah, so, so there, you, there you go. So you, you can't be wrong, you know, if you have the intention, um, you know, of that. But, um, you know, 2017 was a pivotal year. And, you know, I think in ES, uh, it was well described what was what was happening. And then 2018, when um, that uh, cosmic change took place, the, the first harmonic universe moving to the next harmonic universe, which means just for, for people in general, it's like saying just moving up an octave, you know, um, so if you look at a keyboard, if, you, if you're familiar with keyboards and you, you know, you see an octave where it goes do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, da, right, that's one octave. And if you think of it as you, you move up, the, the notes are kind of the same, but it's just vibrating higher and faster, you know. And so I would say since then, there's just been a lot of uh, cosmic changes that needed to take place because once you change one thing you know something else has to change you know just like in your family you know you change a routine that means you have to, like everything else kind of shifts around that because you have to accommodate this new routine yeah. so it's kind of a similar idea so you wanted to add something or ask yeah this just makes me think about there are so many uh questions people have or they come and uh, uh when we're moving and shifting uh octaves <clears throat> and we look at our traditional seven on body chakras there are several chakras but these seven right. on body chakras so when i see us moving into another octave or another harmonic universe i actually see in many people uh the lower harmonic universe kind of dissolves or rolls up mm -hmm. so when when we see this and and maybe you can uh explain this the way you see it i kind of see it like slide up uh, and so it's like, it doesn't really exist or con control you, I guess, in a sense, I don't really know how to say that, or maybe it rolls up or it dissolves. How do you see that piece? And how do you still explain to people that, that system? That, that's what's mm -hmm. happening? Yeah. Well, um, I think the other way to explain it is, uh, which really isn't talked about in um, the quote, spiritual community is that um, our chakras connect into dimensions, you know? And so um, the seven body chakras means that, you know, we connect it up to the seventh dimension. And so um, the first, second and third dimension, uh, if you think of that we've been in 3D, you know, means that uh, the densest aspect of us um, is, uh, is experienced through those lower chakras, the, the solar plexus, the sacral and the root. Um, and that's how we've been, you know, experiencing reality is a much denser human. So that means the chakra cones were even more, let's say, um, kind of locked. And, um, you know, people see, uh, have seen the outer chakra um, cone as being much, you know, you're looking at it being more solid or dense. So if you, if you're moving to a higher harmonic or higher frequencies, then those have to also dissolve and they have to vibrate. Um, like it's like a release. It, it's a release so that it can vibrate higher to this new, um, universal architecture and everything still looks the same because the first, second, and third dimensions, it's not like they went away, they're just vibrating higher, like on the piano key. It's yeah. a higher octave. So yeah, what do you so, want to And you can kind of see the colors change a little too. I see a little difference in the color system mm -hmm. when, when the person is vibrating that dimension on a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost like particleized light, mm -hmm. light, you know, it starts to dissolve the, the outer chakra cone itself. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think the other piece to add about that for just practical reasons of well, what, how do you experience that then, you know, in the body? And um, I think 
one of the things that it's doing, a major thing that's happening with all of that is that it releases our emotions. It releases our emotional body. It releases our mental body. And anything that was hidden or um, that we may not have been dealing with is going to come up. And so then, you know, you hear about a lot of people, oh, I thought I cleared that. And now it's all coming back again. Why am I experiencing this again? That's my, that's my favorite. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Absolutely. And it's, you know, just pulling it out. It's the difference of like, uh, mowing the lawn and pulling, pulling out the weeds, you know, or like, yeah. it's a huge, huge difference. So we really want to get some of these core fears and that's where they live, you know, in those lower densities, those core fears. And we really just want to, I see you and I'm just going to pull you up for, from the root, you know, you no longer are serving me. I mean, let's be honest. Fear is helpful, name of the game. It's protective. It is the name of the game as well. <laughs> yeah. right? So it's, it's, it's done its due diligence and, uh, and it's time to go ahead and let that go. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. And, and a lot of that is being released, you know, especially now, um, especially that, the, the densest one, the root chakra, I, I am really feeling like that one is going through major, major, you know, changes. Um, and I think it's important to point out that um, that even though this began, let's say in 2017, 2018 was the big change, it's been, um, things have been gradually coming online. So like what I experienced with Sammy from beginning 2018 or so is that there was a lot of new um, things being pulled out from far out into the cosmos. And um, for me, what I would describe, there were, I mean, there were, there were months when Sammy would barely get out of bed, even take a drink of water. I mean, not even go to the bathroom because she was so floored by um, physically doing that work of being way, way out there and then uh, bringing it, you know, here onto the planet. Um, you know, to point out that uh, if, it's, if it remains out there, it remains spiritual, and it's not um, physically accessed here. As an actual then, Yeah, there's, it doesn't manifest here, you know? So you need a human here mm -hmm. that can receive that kind of, you know, information. Yeah. And, you know, as a lot of other star seeds and uh, indigos and very sensitive people, let's say, through these activations, you know, we really feel it. You know, we feel it much more than the average, quote, human average person yeah it's it takes a it takes a toll on the body a lot of people uh, also are purging uh illnesses like physical illnesses and diseases like not everybody has uh, i think a lot of them will process it to some uh extent but some people take on a larger contract right to purge all kinds of um uh disease uh miasma and miasma just being like trauma um, but, uh, you know, this is really interesting talking about being way out there and it's, it's, um, uh, I really can feel your daughter's presence when we're speaking. So that is just mm. absolutely amazing. And, uh, when I was uh, doing some grid work, I think it was yesterday, I, I actually saw, and then I read your blog, uh, uh, about Ophiuchus and the dark matter. And it's interesting because yesterday when we were going out to do work, I saw this really interesting, like loose diamond shape as if you were to pull it like this. Oh, uh -huh. um, and it was like, it, there were golden strings and it was like a golden outline. And then the middle was dark. And then it started like opening up. I could see like a golden cube in the center, oh. but, then, but then the gold, like it was like the dark matter started. I could see the emanations uh, it started with gold and then the, the plasma emanations of color started coming through. It was stunning. And I thought, oh, I need to get somebody to draw this. I have, I, I have no idea how to draw it, but does, um, are those the kinds of images that uh, Sam sends to you? Like, cause she can see all of that stuff. Yeah. Well, she, um, sometimes she'll send it to me uh, other times, especially like in 2018, 2019, 
uh, probably even 2020, um, I would either, she would either send me images or sometimes she will look in my eyes and then I'll see, you know, something. Um, and other times, uh, you know, the only thing, the only thing that we could do when she was having a really difficult time, because sometimes she would, would literally explode into, you know, headbanging and kind of a violent um, self-abusive outburst, you know. And so um, I learned that by kind of checking in and then I would see what's going on around her and what the energy was, you know. And so that's when I would uh, draw it. And I noticed that when I would draw it, she would feel better because it was almost like a release. So um, it was quite by accident, you know, that I uh, came on that because nothing else physically in the world that you would try was working, you know. Um, you know, she's on CBD, you know, she's on all of these things. We even tried some um, like, um, what is it? Uh, like a clonazepam. Uh, med medication to uh, try and help her, you know, calm herself and, and like nothing, nothing worked, you know, so that was the only thing that I found um, that was working at that time. And then, you know, I realized that uh, there was a kind of a, a story going on with that about what was happening after we moved, you know, moved up, uh, you know, a harmonic universe that then everything had to be rewired. It's like, yeah, it's, it's basically like redesigning the architecture of um, the dimensionalized system that we exist in. Um, and so my feeling is that the autists, you know, they, they are doing a tremendous service uh, by doing that because they're here on the planet. And, you know, I was shown that, um, that if they hadn't been here, there was there were some cosmic activations that we could not have received because we just the people on the planet just didn't have the right vibration, you know. Yeah. Um, so go I have ahead. A, a question with um, with uh, the collective consciousness of the Atis, uh, do is there a, a decision to come in and uh, have you found that the majority of Atis have come in? Uh, with autism, or is it an environmental? Uh, um, yeah, sorry. is it something environmental? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I would say uh, yes. For for Sammy, um, she said she did, you know, choose uh, to do this, kind of even knowing with these um, vaccines what it would, um, and I mean the traditional childhood vaccines, right? Um, gosh, I hope that doesn't get us censored or labeled or, you know, I but don't um, really, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, but we don't, <laughs> get, yeah, we don't want to get, uh, no. uh, you don't want yeah. people not to have access to the, you know, to the information. The information. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so it, uh, it, she would have been different anyway, but I don't know what, how different, you know, that, that would be. Um, and it definitely, uh, interfered with, her neurological development and um but uh she said you know that her work was to bring in these cosmic streams you know so she would probably have been out there you know a lot uh anyway but it's the physical ease of the body um and the other you know the other thing that she said uh and you know i think probably a lot of people know this is that um there's just so much toxicity on the planet that just those childhood vaccines, you know, um, are, are a piece of it, but the general, it's just generally, um, you know, toxic. Yeah. I've yeah. been seeing uh, like plutonium uh, in the air we breathe. Uh, wow. I've been seeing all kinds of like stuff when we go in and do work and I'm floored. I'm mm -hmm. absolutely floored at what, we are like inhaling on a just a regular it's just an everyday thing no big deal right 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 so i mean you know yeah we try and clear 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 you know and you do you know the best you can it's in our food it's in the air it's in the water i mean you know it's just um it's just it's a toxic planet we've, we've created uh you know a toxic planet yeah. um yeah and the other thing that i want to add about that though is um you know, there's this sort of 
agenda, you know, that um, we have to clean up the planet and we know we do, yeah. you know, and so uh, this talk of the carbon blueprint, you know, on the planet and how much humans pollute, you know, and things, you know, and that's, that's true. Um, but I feel like as individuals, there's only so much that we can do until we change the technology. Yeah. It's really the technology, you know, and for the, I'm like, I feel like I really have no control over the technology that's used. It's kind of, how do we influence the big companies? They say, well, you know, stop buying, stop consuming from that uh, producer, but it's like, well, you got to get gas, you know, for your car. I mean, you know, electricity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like we have to live like a cat, one foot in and one foot out, right? Yeah. Uh, the, it's it's just the way it's just the way that it works. So we do the best we can, um, yeah. and um, and be as ethical as we can. I I think that part of that is going to be making consciousness choices and decisions. Um, and I don't believe that all technology is bad. I think it's been used against us. Right. Uh, right. And so you know once. Once we get a hold of not having to combat technology and actually use it for what it is for, and that's to work with us. And right. I'm not talking about a bunch of like drone, like AI exactly. clones and stuff, right? That's not what I'm talking about, which unfortunately is where we're headed. Um, yeah, trying to steer it in that direction. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, there's all kinds of interesting things there. Um which is now bringing me into this next question that um, uh, actually Liz proposes again. She wants to hear more about HU6, right? Oh. Uh, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to hear more about, you know, um, uh, these new uh, dimensions? So when, when you talk about moving up a harmonic universe, uh, the, is it fair to say, uh, for those listening, is it fair to say that we're, the planet is vibrating uh, at HU2. So, so that would be the soul level. Uh, and when I look at the soul level, I look at these, you know, the, the, the soul body of Tara. And so this is why people are having so many emotions right now and going through so much stuff. It's like putting these pieces back together. And so we're actually vibrating as a planet, as a collective, most, most of us as a collective, I think there's enough of us that have received messages saying we've reached critical mass uh, mm -hmm. to be able to do whatever this next step is. So when, when we move, so if we're vibrating here, is that what opened up harmonic universe six, or was it literally just like our teams came in and said, you guys need some freaking help. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, I would, I would say that it's part of the redesign of, um, of the cosmos, you know? So um, the way I would understand it is, um, so one of the things from the autists, you know, is that um, uh, kind of looking down, they're operating, they operate mainly like at the eighth, ninth dimensional level, let's say as the human, you know, here. So really operating more as an oversoul, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and so they have a different perspective of like looking down, you know? And saying, you know, you 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 guys have really been in a prison. You just don't know it until you can see it from the outside. You know, one of the funny analogies was that um, it's like it's like your zipper's down, but you don't know it's down until somebody else sees it because it's there. You know, until somebody on the outside can tell you, you know, your zipper's open. You know, so it's kind of a similar kind of thing um, where they were, uh, you know, looking down at this and saying. We've, we've sent how many um, truth sayers, uh, how many sages um, to, to try and get humanity out of this themselves. And it's like, whoever we send in, it just gets twisted and reversed. And then you're back in the same place because um, we've only been aware of like, say, let's say these seven chakras, seven dimensions. So when you're going up like that, you feel like, whoa, this is really amazing. But yeah, but there's much more to the human um, than just the seven, you know, body chakras and the, and the, and the physical, um, what Sammy has been calling lately, the white matter uh, expression. That was, it's what we see. So um, this whole mission has been about uh, from 
what I can feel from their perspective is to free humanity. And so it's changing. Um, it's not just people waking up and vibrating higher, but they said, no matter what we did, who we sent, it still got twisted. So we need, yeah. just need to redesign everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one, so, of the, one of the things that I'm seeing, and I probably you've seen this too. I, I think that you can't not see it, but part of that redesign is the opening of the high heart. We're seeing the high heart activate, which is the chakra eight. Right. And so when this high heart activates, I'm seeing them connect to other humans, all the humans mm. uh, activating this chakra mm -hmm. are um, creating a new grid system. Mm. Mm. So it's no, really beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm feeling that as well, um, that the high heart is really opening. And that's yeah. kind of where you where we would connect as unity consciousness, yeah. collective consciousness. And um, yeah, I'm definitely getting that sense that there's really um, who, those of us who are kind of awake to that and vibrating that, that there's really not as much that you have to quote do when you go out there you know it's just just be who you who you are really and you'll vibrate that out to people and that um this uh actually yeah that this phase of the um continued awakening is going to be ha is happening from um people on the ground just kind of yeah. triggering um, it's going to keep going ping, 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 ping. You yeah. Know, it used to take less time where it'd be, uh, I call them like sheep getting out of the pen. Uh, you know, if, if someone comes out of that false light structure, their colors change mm -hmm. and it's like they move out of the pen and then um, the overlords, so to speak, go, oh, look, someone's got out of the pen. We are going to have to go. Yeah. Put them back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put them, give them a whole new, uh, a false white light loop to go back in on keep them in that seven chakra structure yeah. we don't want them moving out of that so tell them another story real quick yeah, yeah exactly exactly um, and we'll get yeah. the media involved exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly that cracks me up um, yeah. I wanna, which is bringing up another thing as we're going through and like peeling back this scab so to speak um it's bringing up a lot of paranormal stuff, a lot of things people are going through. Like, uh, like uh, aside from what uh, Sam is experiencing uh, physically, uh, a, an expression of what she's been experiencing that will paralyze her can also paralyze um, uh, a, a speaking human uh, because yeah. what I'm starting to see is mm -hmm. some crazy stuff. And Kat is saying, yeah. Um, during her time in paranormal investigation, I experienced some cases where children under 10 were targeted by entities. A couple cases involved autistic children. However, what I felt was that their attacks, which included night terrors and poltergeist activity, were stemming from their own expression of what they are experiencing. I began bringing crystals to the investigation to leave with these children and their expression still moves my heart as if they were saying someone heard me very special children with the crucial roles uh, on this earth walk. Oh, thank um, you. Beautiful cat. Thank you for that. Um, and it's like, it's almost like now we're getting a piece of what this collective consciousness what these beings have experienced that have paralyzed them that yeah. have you know because they're see, they're always seeing this they're always experiencing this and mm -hmm. it also um reminds me of um those that uh unfortunately get a diagnosis of schizophrenia yeah and so it's kind of like the same thing and now normal people are are being acting. terrorized right? yeah, yeah 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 it's true it's true and um gosh i mean let me it's what kat um said about these autists um and what they you know experience in the in the physical body um you know they i've noticed that they too well at least with you know definitely with sammy is that uh um they too experience um uh, holding on to trauma as um, like emotional body stuck energy, you know, in their bodies as well. So um, because now it has things have changed. And so Sammy is going through an embodiment process, you know, which is 
which is huge. Um, and I don't know what that's going to look like. I mean, she's still going to be a different kind of human. So uh, I just want her to be safe, you know, but um, um, she too had, uh, there were times when uh, we had to do clearing of um, body emotional traumas that she was holding on to, you know, because some people say, oh, because they're out there, they don't really experience what's happening in the body, but, um, you know, they are still human. And, you know, born into the same uh, kind of um, distorted blueprint, let's say, you know, of the human body, it's the only way they could get in. So she did have um, memories of uh, how she was treated in school, um, you know, by people. Uh, uh, so, there was a lot of that that you know kind of needed to be kind of cleared and um it interfered with her desire to embody because if the body feels like it's dense and it just has a lot of emotional trauma in it then that soul that is really trying to embody now for everybody um you know it was it was like it was like she was in a battle with her body as a soul in the body you know? you know and also not deserving there was a moment when um the body was radiating that um it was not worthy to receive this purity of a soul you know so um you know i'm saying that because other people might have those kinds of experiences as well that i'm not worth i'm not worth this beautiful incredible you know diamond gold <laughs> platinum all these you know th this energy you know, that wants to, um, you know, the, the source of all that is so pristine and beautiful um, that wants to, um, you know, merge with you, you know, into your body, that those can be kind of a barrier, you know. Uh, that like it's giving me chills. Yeah, um, you know, it goes back to the old paradigm that so many of us are stuck in is I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. A big one. And, and Kat is saying for these kids, it felt as if they hadn't pulled themselves back into our time space. Mm. And, um, you know, sometimes I think about that too, when people are, um, they, they'll kind of stay out there, uh, you know, and, and yeah. they won't come back in. Uh, and, um, you know, it's sometimes, you know, once you get that feel for what is out there yeah uh, it really is it's really uncomfortable to come back in and um deal with the traumas because uh, what it sounds like you're saying is no matter what i mean as you're human you come into this distorted blueprint so you're literally just taking you know this perfect soul and you have to yeah. twist it and crunch it up and slam it into this space. And yeah. then it's like, okay, now you need to untwist and unwind yourself uh, in order to experience the shiny, beautiful um, platinum and plasma energies that we have. And it's like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I stay out here. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And I think um, that's, um, that's something that um, many of the star seeds, indigos, people who vibrate higher have to come to because, um, you know, I know for myself that I did not want to be on the planet, that I didn't feel safe here for years, my whole, my whole life where I felt like, you know, I didn't want to be here, you know. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you have a, a couple of minutes, I'll tell this interesting story recently. I have plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, um, because... Um, you know, I thought those were from kind of my own childhood traumas and bullying and things like that. But, um, you know, I was like, well, it still seems to be there. So I sat down one day and I said, um, okay, higher self over soul, you know, and the Lyrans came in. And so they told me, they directed me to imagine myself in my, in the womb in my mother's womb. Um, I was born in Seoul, Korea. So, um, you know, I saw myself and there was literally this dark, evil feeling black energy that came from the planet where I was, you know, went up my tailbone root and just branched off into this, um, into my whole body. And I was like, well, that, that's it right there because um, I just felt my whole baby body cringe, you know, and coil up and I was like, oh, this is not a safe place to be, you know, this is not a safe planet. 
So, you know, ever since then I had that feeling and luckily there was been something else that came through. There was this beautiful tanzanite tree that just branched out into my body that cleared it, you know? So I actually use that to clear um, my children too, you know, cause they weren't there in our room, you know? But anyway, I say that because um, it really feels like uh, it's our planet now. We have taken it back. This is, this is our planet. It's a planet that's meant to be for an avatar human that is in resonant balance with all life, you know, and that we need to bring through the technologies that is not anti-life, but that will promote life. And so we're really being invited to really embody, get it down and all the way down to that root, you know, allowing that soul connection to happen, you know, fully through us. And, um, you know, I might say that that's what Yeshua came to, to uh, try and do, you know, that was part of his, you know, core mission. Um, but we all know what happened, you know, with that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just want to say that because it feels like they have restructured the universe. This is why this 16th, 17th, and 18th quote dimensions, even though they're not really quote dimensions, um, have come online because uh, it's part of it's part of the redesign. Um, we know what I tell people is just imagine that um, the base software, the base programming has now changed. And that's what gets us out of that 3D false matrix because that false matrix cannot exist in this new uh, program. Yeah, it was a fallen, uh, it was just a fallen system. Yeah. Uh, and a fallen system that uh, should have never happened. We should, it should, none, none of that should have ever, yeah. none of it should have happened and it did. So it is what it is. But I agree with you. I believe we've taken our planet back as well. Um, yeah. I'm loving this Tansonite tree here talking about. We're going to have to like, we're going to have to talk. Because <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll share it. I'll share that. I'll, I'll share yeah. that um, publicly. Because um, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I know we're at about an hour. Um, I don't, uh, I, I mean, I can talk forever. I no, yeah, I'm okay with time. Talking. Yeah. Well, it's, okay, you're good. It's 1045. Yeah, it's 1045. Yeah, we can. Okay. Well, for, for me, for us, it's 1045. Um, oh, oh, I'm looking at our time from when we popped in when I started running the thing. Oh, good. We have plenty of time. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. Yeah, I don't know if I did I answer the question about the 16th, 17th, and 18th dimension. I don't know. I mean, it's just, um, it's hard to um, fully. It's more. I think it's more of a sensation. It's more of a knowing. It's not something that you can actualize if you haven't created a cellular knowing in your body. Mm -hmm. So if you're still struggling uh, with uh, shadow, if you're still struggling or with negative ego, uh, these kinds of things, if you're still um, being sucked back down into the fallen system, it's going to be really hard to feel uh, the... Um, expression of that harmonic universe that's my take on it i don't i just mm -hmm. i don't I, I think it's accessible to everybody yeah it's uh, all yeah. of all of this is accessible to everybody but it's only going to be accessible um when it's almost like it's not that it doesn't exist if you don't believe it but it's almost like it just won't exist because it won't enter into your consciousness it won't enter into your knowingness if um if you're not doing the work uh, to to um, be where where pl the planet needs you to be, does that? Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 also that it's um, it's what's it's what's clearing out the planet. That's what that's you know kind of what I'm you know seeing. Um, um, they become a little bit more distinguishable. Um, the 16th, the 17th, the energies that are coming through in the in, you know since the beginning of January. Um, as the portals um, opened up on the, on the earth stars opened up here. So it's causing oh, yeah, the, star. the stars. That's what, that's one the one piece, like, are they new gates or are they, uh, are they new stargates or are they stargates that have always been here? They're just opening up. How do you perceive? They're that? new. They're, they're, uh, it looks like it's new, you know, they're, and they've been oh. coming online for a couple of years since about late 
2019. Um, and I only experienced it because, um, because of Sam. Uh, and, you know, even in 2016, see, she handed me, I remember like these three balls that she handed me. And I was like, oh, what is that? You know, and she said, it's the 16th, 17th and 18th chakras, you know? Um, so, you know, things, a lot of things that didn't make sense to me over the last few years, um, you know, it's, uh, it's starting to make sense. It's, it's, it was, it was kind of the plan, um, I guess, to redesign the universe, uh, our universal architecture. Um, so it's that sixth harmonic universe. It's, it seems to give us more direct awareness of dark matter um, mm -hmm. and what it does. And um, be really, I think it's really gonna change our technology you know, on the planet that more, more of that awareness of it, you know, scientists won't know why, but, you know, they may suddenly be able to um, have different discoveries about dark matter, you know, suddenly. Right. So yes. um, I feel like, I feel, what is she, can you, can they be used as portals to bring in energy? I see sure. them as old. I see them as original stargates. Um, oh. I don't see, but that doesn't mean I'm right or, or that I even hear the language right. No, no, um, no. Um, like, like, like I've, I've been hearing, we're going back to, it's new, but it's like the old organic structures or something. So I don't know if that, I have no well, idea what that means. Well, I mean, I mean, in simultaneous time, you know, it is like, yeah, feeling like it's always been there, you know, on the one hand, um, maybe from a 3D perspective, you know, 3D paradigm perspective. Oh yeah, they absolutely. Look like they're yep. new, but in yep. simultaneous time, because um, you know we've already completed this. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we're like we're coming back to kind yeah. of fit in the pieces here, you know, but it's already yeah. really done. Thank so you for the reminder, sometimes I need to. Uh, sometimes, speaking of not living in your body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So they, they they do seem to be streaming in these different waves, you know, coming into the planet. Um, what I noticed too, in probably about a month ago now, or no, not I mean a couple of weeks ago, um, is that um, it is essentially cleaning out the subconscious and un unconscious as well, and um, then there there seems to be more noticeable. Um, like dark entities uh, in the earth. And it's hard to say dark matter, but we mean like like the bad guys kind of dark, you know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, these entities that have uh, kind of even been um, controlling certain ley lines and access points in the planet, you know, so they were, um, you know, kind of, kind of clearing that out. Let me just say dark matter, you know, dark entities and, you know, uh, dark spirits and things. At this point, because some people say, oh, well, they don't really exist. I, I just think of them, they're like very distorted um, consciousness that has uh, coalesced into and made itself kind of coherent. And so then it becomes an entity, you know, but it's of a very distorted consciousness from absence of connection to source, you know. So um, that's thought, what thoughts turn into really crazy looking distortions, like some of the most grotesque creatures um, that you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So it's really fascinating uh, to understand the power of uh, thought. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen them too, like just a uh, icky little, uh, you know, I just call them distortions now. I just call them distortions, you know. Um, and uh, they, they can't remain in control anymore because the universe has been, that we exist in, I'm sure there's more out there, you know, has been uh, all redesigned. Um, and so now it's, you know, I feel like we've taken, I feel like we've taken back the planet and that we're actually even influencing the uh, un unconscious and subconscious of humanity as those ley lines in the planet are uh, much easier to, to clear because I think from these waves from the 16th, 17th and 18th, you know, dimensions um so what was now hidden you know it's all being exposed and that's what we're just witnessing out in the in the world is um you know 
you hear people speaking on uh, at press conferences and they're making somehow little Freudian slips and things, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like it's a leaky faucet and sometimes it drives me nuts, but so I don't generally listen to that. I just go into, um, I just kind of live in uh, Sam's world and I just go, okay, what am I seeing? What am I sensing? What do we need to bring down that kind of thing? Because if I have to listen to uh, these other things, I'll lose my mind. And I, I don't want to do that. I have to stay focused. Yeah. And, uh, they yeah. take you through these loops and, you know, people are going, how come this hasn't happened? I'm waiting for this. And it's like, and I see all these great things happening. I'm like, wow, I know all these great things are happening. We just have to bring it here. Like yeah. we need more people to bring it in. So, um, you know, really anchoring, um, really anchoring in, uh, all that is, you know, start calling in these organic energies, start calling in these, um, even just using the word sovereign, you mm -hmm. know, we're sovereign humans. Mm -hmm. You don't even, you can, if you're uncomfortable with the word God, that's okay. You're still a sovereign human. Right. Uh, and no matter what, you're still, you know, we still go by God's book of the law and I'm not talking about the Bible. <laughs> so like not right. religious in any way, shape or form. So it's really fascinating to uh, just see all of this come together and just know that, you know, it's like with every step and you talk about Yeshua and I imagine him walking. And when I imagine and, and the ones uh, before and after, you know, I can picture king arthur and uh, like the feet it's like when your feet touch the ground i can feel the fetal cells vibrate mm. and it's like i can feel the energy coming in uh, and then the for lack of better term mission is so intense like and to just know like that uh that feeling of you know, we like we got it, but it's almost like a secret that we got it. And it's it's like held in everyone's heart. And this is these are these hearts that I'm seeing opening up. It's absolutely stunning. And mm -hmm. then you if then if you turn the, the, the news channel on or something, all of a sudden the light in your heart goes and then the ley lines go. And it's like, no, 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 turn it off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I listen to sound bites of, of things, you know, yeah. but yeah, I think you're right. It's if um, people, you know, watching mainly mainstream media and things, you know, you're only going to get one side of the story. Um, but there's a whole lot more going on, um, you know, behind the scenes, so to speak. And um, to me, I mean, to, to kind of see or feel at this point, Sammy doesn't look any, it's not acting different behaviorally on the outside. Uh, although those head banging things have kind of gone down a lot and stuff but um to see her embodying means that um uh we've made a big big change now and it's no longer it's really no longer the same planet um and things are really accelerating the changes are accelerating there's uh, like i said i think uh new technology um is uh um is already here uh I think the resources that we um, require for clean air energy, clean air technology, it's going to, um, the discoveries are, it's gonna accelerate. So, um, and I think I was saying this in our um, Patreon community, but you know, if people have watched anything about this space programs and things, like advanced technology is already here, you know, it's been here um, and we, um, need the uh the appropriate elements from the earth you know to uh, manifest some of this but um they're going to be making more discoveries i mean that's what the that's what the kids the autists uh, you know have been saying and um uh they also showed me that like you know if you imagine that we get our minerals and things heavy metals from uh supernova explosions um they were saying that uh you know, like from a 3D perspective, we think, oh, it has to travel here. It's going to take, you know, hundreds of millions of years before it even reaches us. But in the eighth dimension, it's like instant, you know, that you might as well, it's like tachyons, you know, that just, uh, and then as they come through, you know, down through the seventh dimension and down and become, it, it becomes matter, 
you know. Um, and so those, the materials, it seems, you know, they're already, they're already here. Uh, I think we already have the technology. They just haven't wanted to share it. You know, I think that's going to come out in the next couple of years. And um, there's a push for, um, there's going to be a, a big push that comes kind of innately that um, uh, we need to be one with the planet, you know, and not just the humanity, um, but one with all sentient life on, on the planet. Um, and this sounded kind of crazy to me, but they said that um, uh, like our currency is going through a lot of changes, right? I mean, yeah. and then big- I, I, don't get a, I don't get a lot of hits on the currency stuff, but I have been seeing that the Babylonian uh, black magic curses are being lifted. Uh, so I am seeing that and, and we've been working with that. So um, uh, that means there's going to be a structural, a structural uh, yeah. change. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Yeah. They said that because I was like, well, it was, um, we have to attach it to something physical in the, in the world, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, they said it was going to be water. <laughs> Fascinating. Plasma. Okay. And this is bringing me to my next thing. It keeps coming in as I'm talking to you. So I must need to say something about it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I've been seeing, uh, you know, basically we're going to be pretty much operating as a three stranded human being, a three DNA stranded human being oh. um, is kind of like what I'm seeing. But with mm -hmm. this um, inoculation, I've been seeing an AI uh, third strand of DNA forming. And um, it's now, now you're saying water and I'm hearing plasma and I'm seeing DNA strands. And when we're creating this new organic structure, my thought is this structure, the uh, alien machinery is being dismantled. I mean, I mean, that's just plain as day it's happening. It's being dismantled. Um, we're, you know, we're in the right to do a, a full turnaround of 100% taking over the planet back to humanity, back to sovereignty. And so the fact that there's not going to be an AI third strand of DNA, my thought is, wouldn't any of the damage that's causing protein damage, mm -hmm. wouldn't wouldn't that just dissolve because the planet can't sustain it? It just popped mm -hmm. into my head now. Mm -hmm. Like it has to dissolve. Yeah. Or, or like some kind of blood cleaner or something. I am, I am kind of seeing those kinds of visions too, where things just, they just dissipate. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it, it, yeah, it's almost like it just literally is uh, vanishing, you know? Uh, Cause at the macro level, you know, when we're, if we're operating on like this, um, uh, 18 dimensional universe now, then, uh, then too, at the quantum level has to change. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, with the recent changes too, um, uh, of the proton changing mm -hmm. and, um, what I'm seeing now is like feeling neutrons and they're going through some kind of shift. So that mm -hmm. means it's a shift in matter and we have to change in matter our density, as you know, because if the planet is vibrating higher, then we have to change our density. And Absolutely. so, yeah, so things are, things are dissolving a lot easier. And so I think that's what contributes to spontaneous healing. Mm -hmm. people. They're going to, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to shut the doors on those who are not uh, yep. objected. Right. Um, but it's going to be like, well, heck, I don't think we're going to need that kind of traditional medicine, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And then there's doctors moving you know, in yeah. directions. There, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. I can already see different types of, uh, it's going to say, I, I'm not saying it's not going to take the ones that are injected time. I mean, it's going to take them time to heal and they're going to have to want to, right. Otherwise I think they'll be subject to their own, um, their own things or, or, you know, whatever, but, um, yeah, I, uh, Oh, I lost what I was going to say. It's probably not important if I lost it, but um, I can see everything changing uh, in terms of medical stuff. Oh, the telomeres. Um, mm -hmm. I keep seeing telomeres. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's almost like, um, uh, it's almost like we'll have a reverse aging process and it's going to start, you know, by like, we'll start seeing it like in our skin or start seeing it, you know, visually, mm -hmm. Um, 
uh, which which looks to me like with these new uh, rays coming in, then that helps with uh, organ, uh, you know, uh, organ healing mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. endocrine system healing, you know, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that because, um, I mean, with this sixth harmonic universe as well, where the dark matter, I mean, Sam, and Sammy had explained it to me as um, that we have a dark matter matrix mm -hmm. and um, it defines the is not space. So there's literally um, like a dark matter matrix that tells you what you are not. You are not a tree. You are not this. Mm -hmm. And even down to the organs mm -hmm. that you are not a heart, you are not a liver. And so it, it defines the space then in that is not space. Um, it defines the space for the light to be able to go through. And that's what we manifest from. Um, so that's what we see is the white matter. Uh, so with the telomeres, with our DNA, that there's exactly, there's also then, you know, down to that micro, micro quantum level, there is, um, let's say like a dark matter matrix for your DNA. And um, that's, it looks like that's where the repair is actually done. And because uh, then what manifests is the, is the correction, you know? Um, and then we have to, you know, we have to work with our fetal cells, those eight cells that are still there in the uh, perineum area or tailbone. Um, so we also work with those fetal cells to uh, tell it, you know, that there's, you know, this is the blueprint now. And, you know, the interesting thing um, about these shots and um, mRNA and all this other business is um, one of the, before all this happened, I remember in 2019, one of the other artists came and she said, um, in our light bodies is a, um, they're like little geom geometric shapes that match our messenger RNA because it communicates with our mRNA yeah. to tell it, you know, right? Because we have to do this reverse scriptase, right? Where the, the RNA tell, can also tell the DNA to change. So that's basically what it is. I'm not talking about it scientifically, but that's my understanding of it, you know? Perfect. So um, it's interesting. You have to talk to people like, so they can understand, right? Yeah, yeah. So well, that's sense. how I understand it too. I'm not a scientist. Um, Me either. But um, you're forced but to. I, I, but I play one on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and my only knowledge came about to be like this because, you know, you probably like you, you know, you see, you see a word or you see something in, in your vision and you go, what is that? You know, you have to look it up, you know, uh, and you're like, wow, it really exists. You know, well, that's when you're. Really <laughs> and then you have to learn how to read, not just peer reviewed, you know, information. Yeah. Like you have to start to learn how to read data. And then all of a sudden you're down rabbit hole, medical rabbit holes. And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you froze. I'll just wait for you to pop back in. I think we might have uh, we might have blown the system here for a second. <clears throat> I'll wait. Oh goodness! I wonder if you can hear me, Susan. Perhaps you'll um, pop back on. Uh, we lost our power. Oh, she lost power. Okay. Ooh, that's okay. Um, we were like, we we're like over an hour anyway. So uh, I'm just going to say, um, oh, I'm going to text her and say um, uh, goodbye. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, what an amazing talk. Um, I know uh, I love Susan. I love all the work that she's doing. I'm going to post where you can find her work. She does do session work. She has a Patreon community as well. Uh, and I think in the description here also is a link to her website. So um, I'll put all that in the chats and uh, uh, maybe get this up on YouTube if they let it fly. If not, maybe you guys won't see me on YouTube for a while. Who knows? Uh, so <laughs> she's saying, okay, tell everyone goodbye, darn NAA. Anyway, that was fun. Um, we're going to hear from Susan uh, more moving forward. I'm going to do some more uh, individual chats. And uh, I really feel uh, a women's roundtable coming up. So uh, hold on uh, to your hats and glasses. All right. <laughs>
I love you guys so much. Thanks for being here. See you later.